All right, you're learning some Spanish. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pasa? To hear Gordy speak Spanish is, is really something, you know? It's a great treat. Esta noche les quiero invitar a todos ustedes, amigos de la villita, que vengan a mi cuarto después de esta reunión, si tienen dinero. Pero no si tienen un poquito de dinero, si tienen mucho dinero. Vengan a mi cuarto todos los amigos de la villita. Man, I'm learning from John Perkins, I tell you. And if you don't understand what I said, well, you know, learn some Spanish. <laughs> One of the most familiar passages that uh, we have heard and we are, have been instructed by and taught in CCDA is the passage in John chapter 4 about the Samaritan woman. This person that, that had no possibility of having an experience with God, who was locked out of relationship with God, who was on the outside, who was judged and, and who herself became a victim of a lifestyle that kept her from really having fellowship with God. And Jesus, on his, on his travels, instead of going around Samaria, he said, you know what, we're going to go through Samaria because there's something there that I got to do. And he brought his disciples and he brought them along with him. And they stop and he's uh, there at this well. And he says, you know what, I got to rest here for a while. And they go off and uh, they go to find food. And while they're gone trying to feed their stomachs, and while they're gone trying to satisfy their needs, Jesus has one of the most incredible encounters with anyone that's recorded in history. And he meets this woman and he begins to minister and love her and, and reveal to her that he is the Messiah, the one true uh, Savior that was sent by God to bring life to the world. And he reveals to her that, that, that she herself can have that life even though she was a sinner. Even though her lifestyle and, and others, she was a sinner, but she was also a person who had been sinned against. And Jesus Christ touches her life, and an incredible thing happens, and, and, and ministry takes place. Not unlike the kind of ministry that you and I want to see happen in our communities. Jesus the Reconciler. And then when the disciples come back, they come in and, and it says in the meantime they come and they, and they find Jesus and they're oblivious to what just happened. And he said, they say to him, teacher, teacher, have something to eat. But he answered to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Les dice, yo tengo algo que comer que ustedes no conocen. You don't know nothing about this food. And so the disciples started asking among themselves, well, you know, who, who, who brought him the Taco Bell? <laughs> you know, who brought him the food? Where did he get food? Why isn't he hungry? And then Jesus makes one of the most incredible statements in the Bible and one that has fed my soul. He says, my food, he said, is to obey the will of the one who sent me and to finish what he gave me to do. To finish the work that he gave me to do. Mi comida es hacer la voluntad del que me envió y terminar su trabajo. Well, I want to tell you that tonight that that is what has filled my heart. That I believe that the reason that we're here and the reason that I'm here today is because one day Jesus came into my life and he began to tear away all other distractions, all other priorities to where I too could say like Jesus, my food is to do the will of he who sent me and to accomplish that work that he sent me to do. 
Mi comida. What I need to live and to be sustained. The thing that drives me. The thing that gives me purpose. The thing that, that makes me who I am. It ain't food, even though I love food. But it's to do the will of my Father. I, 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 that's, there's nothing I want more. And they didn't understand. The disciples didn't understand what he was talking about. But tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about how our hearts can be gripped with the same response that Jesus himself responded with. That I believe that's what God wants to strip us to in our life. I believe that's what we've been hearing uh, people exhort us to. That in the issues of reconciliation, in the issues of, of doing the will of God and not just talking about it, that we would be able to say, my food, what, what, what makes me full, what makes me who I, I am, is the, the fact of doing the will of he who sent me and then finishing the work that he has sent me to do. Well, let me tell you what my food is tonight. I believe that God has laid on my heart a desire, number one, to be a man of God. To be a man of character. To be a man after God's own heart. And you know what that means? You know what God is doing to me? God is breaking me. God is tearing me apart. God is revealing to me how sinful I am. That I can't be who He wants me to be in my own power. That I can't meet people's expectations. That I can't do the things that, that I know need to be done. And so as I strip all of that away, I scream and I yell in my heart, the same thing that King David said in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing more I need. What shall I want? There's nothing else. There's nothing else. The Lord is my shepherd. My call. And I believe your call as a Christian. The very first thing we need to, to, to get straight is that God wants to make us pure. Men and women of character that love God more than anything else. And then for me, I thank God that He has revealed to me the purpose the, the, that, that I, I can say, this is the job. This is the task that God has called me to. And that is to, to pastor this little church in southwest Chicago in the barrio of La Villita. To, to work there, to live there to embrace my brothers and sisters there, to be a shepherd and to love and, and, and to raise up men and women of God who have that same burden to say, mi comida es hacer la voluntad de Dios. And, and, and that's what God has laid on my heart to do. And then, and then in His mercy and, and, and by His Spirit, to be able to encourage and to move and to challenge other brothers and sisters to do the same kind of thing, to, to embrace barrios all over this country, all over Latin America, to take the principles of Christian community development and to begin doing the same thing because I believe that in this we have a strategy, we have a tool, we have a biblical approach to bringing transformation to barrios and to communities all over our country that we, I have not found in anything else. I praise God for what He's done in this movement and the way that He has put that on my heart. And let, let me tell you a little bit about the people that God has called me to reach and the people that, that I believe that all of us need to be aware of and know that, 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 you know, to love God is to love the Latino people. Some of you have seen the movie El Norte. It's a movie about a family and, and a people that come to El Norte, to the north from, from uh, Guatemala, from Latin America. And it, 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 it chronicles their journey into Los Angeles, to the north. And you know what happens in this movie? You would not believe the, 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 atro the atrocities that they have to face as they make their way from a, a life of poverty into this country, believing that when they get to the north, that they're going to have prosperity and riches and freedom and hope. But when they get to El Norte, you know what they find? They find a country where they are strangers. Even though 
the Spanish language is plastered all over their streets and all over their freeways. They are aliens and they are unwanted and they are unwelcome. And as we see in this movie, they struggled and they worked and, and, and they just could not understand why they could not reach the American dream. And they don't even know what the American dream is because it's out of reach. They get closer and closer only to find out that they're further away. And many of our peoples have come to this country seeking this myth, this myth, this dream that this is not to be found. And they come and they, they search and they work and, and, and they don't find it because they struggle and, and, and they're uh, strangers in a land that is somewhat familiar. And then there's another movie that some of you have seen. It's called American Me. And it's a story of, of, of these young uh, uh, gangbangers and, and, and gang members and, that are in uh, the barrios of Los Angeles and how their whole life is uh, wrapped up in violence and the, and the fellowship of the club, of these gangs. And they are trapped in this lifestyle. They don't know how to function outside of the criminal, criminal justice system. They don't know how to function outside of the gang. No saben como vivir en este mundo. They don't know how to live in this world except for in those conditions. They are isolated. They're isolated. Well, that, it's not just a movie, friends. We have many of our young people who, as they are struggling with understanding what it means to be Chicano, a, a Mexican descent or Latino descent, and then living in an Anglo culture where, that is uh, unfamiliar and, and many times antagonistic, they are caught in the middle and they can't even speak to their own parents. They come home and they speak English and their parents respond to them in Espanol. And there's a clash and there's generational gap that tears these kids apart. And I thank God for, for the, the way that God has moved in the life of Bob uh, Salinas in our church who's beginning to raise up these young men and reaching out to them in the name of Jesus and, and making a difference in the life of Caesar, in the life of Jesse and Ernie and Israel. Now all these biblical names, I'm trying to get Ernie to change his name. If we do that, boy, we'll have something, right? And I'm excited because we know that even though the picture is bleak that is painted in this movie, that there's a new reality, there's a new hope that is only able to be realized through the gospel. And then there's that movie, Stand and Deliver. One of my heroes is Jaime Escalante, this teacher, this math teacher, this trigonometry teacher in East L.A. again. And he comes, and he comes with a message of hope a message of expectation and he takes these barrio kids that nobody else gave a rip about nobody gave a chance and he says Sales que? you can be somebody you can excel you can learn math you can you can do it and I love when he tells his students Johnny come on you can do it Johnny don't give up and then one day he tells the story of a man uh, 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 one of his classrooms when he has two students both of them named Johnny and one day they have an open house and one of the Johnnies is a brilliant student, all kinds of potential. And then the other student, Johnny, is barely getting by. He never comes to class. He's struggling. He, he doesn't know if he's going to make it. And so the night of open house, Johnny's mother comes and she comes into the door, the, the classroom door, and she begins talking to the teacher, the Jaime, and then he begins to say, oh, I can't, but one can't tell you how great your son Johnny is. Es un estudiante fabuloso, es increíble. And she, he goes on and tells her how great, he, and, the, and the mother is about to drop dead. She can't believe it. And she just is wide-eyed, and she leaves home all excited. The next day, the Johnny who was always late, never came to class, walks in. He's the first one there. 